nice dog you got here, lady. Of brothers. What are they doing with a purse and a dog? I don't know. Oh, oh. Oh, She's hurt. I'll help you, honey. I'll help I'll you. I'll call the police. Here. It's all right, honey. Oh, God. A hundred and twenty-two bucks. Who figured a dame for that kind of dough? We should stick to elevators and old ladies at night. Does Elmani saw us? What does Elmani saw us? Who are they gonna tell? Sociology, part of a pilot program. Overall, change our image. I know, Dan, you work alone, but this isn't permanent. More or less an apprenticeship for Norman here. As I'm sure you know, Sergeant, too many colleges have become a battleground for students and the police. Well, a lot of cops go to college part-time, but I didn't see any students joining the force. So I thought I'd try to balance it out. Doesn't think there's ever any need for a cop to carry a gun. Use a gun, sir. Use a gun. That's <laughs> now, your partners. Good luck. Thank you. Come on, Norm. I prefer Norman. You know, already one of my notions has been shot down. What's that? The police being paramilitary. Not after your attitude toward the captain of detectives. Me being a mere sergeant. Oh, I didn't mean that. Charlie Kane and I were partners, the only one I could stand. But he didn't talk as much then as he does now. I'll see you in the squad room.
Bobby, look at this. Everybody with a summer tan except Joe and Tommy Locker. Please. Oh, pretty please. The stairs a lousy place to get a tan. You know what I mean? You think he knows what we mean? Hoodlum! Evita. Now you listen to the old man, old lady. <laughs> Madigan these days? No. You wouldn't talk to me even if you did, would you? I mean, it ain't healthy to talk to Dan Madigan. Side. I killed my man, and God is my witness. Well, Self-defense, Dan. He was beating her up. Mm. Do you like a cold drink? She saw the whole thing. Welfare people are sending somebody over for her. OK. You want cola or orange? Huh? Turn around, you better be drinking, all right? Okay? What do we got? I don't know where to start. Well, try the one on top. Oh. <clears throat> Joe Monzo, wanted in uh, Reno for murder one, now believed to be in New York. Height six feet, weight 185, hair dark, eyes brown, no identifying scars. <sighs> Likes hot dogs with sugar on them. Huh? See for yourself. There you go, you're right, hot dogs with sugar on them. <laughs> Love, not war, honey. There you go. Lovely young woman. Yes. I, uh, you seen a guy who put sugar on his hot dog? What? A guy who put sugar on his hot dog. A guy who puts sugar on his hot dog? Yeah, you seen him? Yes or no? No. Much obliged. Well, that's all there is to it. Do you like police work, Sergeant? Nope. Why do you do it? It's what I do. I once had a psychology professor who felt very strongly about Look, that. Look, Norman, stay out of my head, will you? It's a rat's nest. Car 6-3, come in 6-3. Car 6-3. Central Park Area 4, Amerio Zelmonte. Roger. Let's go. What's Amerio Zelmonte? I'll show you Central Park. I'm afraid they might see if you came to the store. Afraid who'd see? Hoodlums, the Lacker brothers. They're out. I know. They threatened me and my wife if we ever talked to Sergeant Madigan again. Mr. Zelmani witnessed one of their muggings. I put him away. The whole neighborhood is afraid of those bums. But I spoke up. Now, you've got to protect me. Unfortunately, Mr. Zelmani, we can't arrest them for what they might do. They have to actually break the law. That's right, Mr. Zelmani. But you give us a call if they so much as spit on your sidewalk. Anything. Afraid we didn't give him much hope? There ain't much hope. Maybe we could have a talk with those guys. We will, soon enough.
Sergeant Madigan, do you think you could ask this time? Yeah, you're doing fine, Norman. Just fine. We're looking for a man about my height. Like sugar on his hot dogs. Sugar, huh? Maybe mustard, too. We don't know. But sugar. Mustard and sugar. Could even be onions. But sugar. Yeah, sugar's the main thing. That's what we're looking for. Hey, yeah. Just yesterday it was. Guy came over, asked for a sugar dog. Yeah? Yeah, it was a funny looking guy. He put sugar on his hot dog, onions in his soda pop, and a pickle on his ice cream. But you know something? He never touched the stuff. Just ate the paper plate, Come wiped on. off his mouth with the bun, turned on the propellers on his shoes, and took off. A week ago Friday, it was a big run here, about nine feet tall, she had water wings on. <laughs> sugar, huh? Sugar. Hey, Mary, hurry up, eh? All right, all right. We won't miss the show. Two ham and cheese on rye. Sorry, everything is put away. Oh, but we're hungry. We're closed. Yeah, but we're hungry. Ain't you hungry, Tommy? I am hungry. Mm. Two ham and cheese on rye. We close at 5 on Saturday. Today's Saturday. Yep. Is it five o'clock? Yep. You know, I always get hungry at five o'clock on Saturday. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Two ham and cheese on rye. Get out of here. Come on, baby. <laughs> Two ham and cheese on rye. <laughs> I'm calling the police. I'm calling Sergeant Maddie. No! <laughs> Place. Yeah, it is nice. I get in here a lot. Did you enjoy your dinner, Sergeant? Wonderful, Tony. Just wonderful. Good, I'm glad. Thank you. We'll split it. <laughs> That's all right, Norman. It's on me. Everything okay, Maddie? Great, Phil. As usual. This is my partner, Norman Fields. Well, pleased to meet you. Right. Feeling lucky? Yeah, sure. Double or nothing? You're on. I match. You lucky son of a gun. <laughs> Get you next time. Enjoy. Thanks, Phil. Ciao. Ciao. But you didn't see his coin. Oh, Phil wouldn't cheat me. Come on. You work hard. You're honest. And what do you get? Lumps. Please, Mary. Stop thinking about it, eh? What else should I think about? Think about getting well. So they can beat me up again. Next time, we mind our own business. Yes? Is it all right if I come in, Mrs. Almani? I hope you don't mind my coming up. I should have thought to bring something to put these in. We don't want your flowers. Look, I can't tell you how sorry. How terrible I felt when I heard it. My... Mrs. Almani, my brothers were drunk. When my brother drinks, he goes to sleep. Is there anything I can do? Keep your brothers away from us. Keep them away. Hello. How are you, Mr. Zomani? I'm all right. Who called you? Nobody. Why didn't you? That's what started it. He was trying to. No, it was nothing. I fell down. Take her out of here. Yes. Janet Laka, their sister. Look, I meant what I said. If there's anything I can do... Out.
me about your brothers. You've got their records. I mean, from your point of view. What kind of a cop are you? What kind of a cop are you accustomed to? Madigan. Madigan and I have the same job, but that doesn't make us the same men. Let's, let's say we have a different approach. To getting a conviction? To people. Can I buy you a cup of coffee? Come on. It'll only take a minute. You wouldn't have change for a dollar, would you? Thanks. How do you like it? Flat. I like that. Uh, so tell me about your brothers. What do you want to know? What isn't in their records? I'm sure you've heard it all before. Poverty, ghetto, street gangs. Do you love them? They're my brothers. Looks like no coffee. I'm sorry. That's OK. Ruins my whole procedure, you know? How's that? Well, when you see buying a cup of coffee is supposed to break down the social barriers between us. You're supposed to feel more relaxed and then talk more freely to me. Who told you that? Oh, I took a course in social psychology that laid it all out for me. Just didn't prepare me for a broken coffee machine. Just what do you want from me? Exactly. Well, I feel if I knew a little more about your brothers, maybe I could help them. How? There are ways, you know. Halfway houses, group therapy counseling, new programs that we're experimenting with all the time. Look, I think they got a chance. Tommy especially. Oh, Joe leads him around by the nose. Joe can be trouble. You see, he don't trust anybody. I don't know. Maybe you could talk to Tommy. Some of the time. They won't file a complaint. They're scared of stiff. Did you get anything out of her? Started to, I think. Maybe I could reach those guys through her. You better wear gloves. I'd like to try and establish a dialogue with them. Good luck. And stick to one-syllable words. We can't just write them off without at least trying to build a bridge. Engineers build bridges. You want some coffee? The machine's broke. Maybe you don't know how to communicate with it. How do you like it? Black. You know, Sergeant, sometimes I don't get you. You're an intelligent man. Why do you dismiss the possibility of getting through to the lackeys? Norman, you're full of new ideas. I'm full of old ones. I've been doing it your way for a long time. How much good has it done? Not much. You see, I'm a garbage collector. I clean up the mess everybody makes. I don't mean to underestimate your experience. Look, Norman, let me tell you something. I'm not paid to find out why these creeps do what they do. My job is to grab them for what they do. I'd like to be able to just walk up and say hello to the Joe Lackers of this world, but you can't do it, Norman. You just can't do it. Come on, let's go. Almani Grocery? Where is the Zelmani Grocery? Where do you live? Right over there. The Zelmani Grocery is right over there. Thanks a lot. Joe Lacker, Tommy Lacker, 
Never heard of them. Did you guys? Oh, Who beat up Mr. Salmani? <laughs> Maybe his wife did it. <laughs> That's very funny. Deaf, the dumb, and the blind. How about let me try it once, Sarge? Sure, go ahead. I beg your pardon, sir. What do you want, Mac? Sir, do you feel it's a citizen's duty to assist the police in a legitimate investigation? Damn right, that's the American way. Uh, were you working here at 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon? Yeah, I was. Were you aware of the disturbance over there in the Salmani grocery? Uh, no, nah, no, nah, I, uh, I can't see anything when I'm down here. Thanks. Like I was telling you, Norman, you can't win. Somebody turn on a fan. We I smell pig. Hello, boys. Long time no see. But not long enough. Where were you guys yesterday at 5 o'clock? We were yesterday at 5 o'clock. I don't remember where we were yesterday at 5 o'clock. We don't remember. You don't remember? Uh-uh. How about the Zelmani grocery? Yeah. We weren't there. That's funny. An old man got beat up. I figured that had to be you. Wasn't me. Was it you, Tommy? No, it wasn't me. No, I didn't think it was you, Junior. Now, if it was the old lady got beat up, that would be you. Are they giving you a bodyguard, man, again? Hmm? My name's Fields. I met your sister. You do it, Joe, you'll be spitting blood for a month. I can take care of myself. If you two creeps go near the Zelmanis again, I'll roust you behind bars seven nights a week. Eh? Uh, what's the charge? Vitamin deficiency. There he is. Oh, good. Hi. Hello, dear. Sorry, I'm late. Oh. Hi, Dad. Hi. Uh, it's still warm. Yes. Oh, thank you. We were worried. Why were you so late? I had to see some suspects. They give you any trouble? Madigan handled it. Darling, why don't you bring him home some night? I'll ask him. Is he married? Divorced, I think. He doesn't talk much about himself. Well, then he'd certainly like a home-cooked meal, hmm? Oh, uh, he eats well enough. Tough day? Lousy. It's the heat. Every day is lousy. It's the humidity. It gets everybody down. I'm sick of this crummy job. You don't have to be bright in the head, just mean. That's me, mean. I don't think you're so mean. You don't, huh? Then I was about a late movie. Oh, I'd love to, Dan, but... My feet are killing me. They got seats. I got the early shift, Mom. Uh, How about the roller derby on Friday? Uh-uh. Too violent. Hey, Angie. Just what sort of a man is this Madigan? Well, I guess what we want to know, son, is he the kind of policeman who, uh, well, you know, takes chances? Dad, I told you, he's a real pro. I'm off Friday. I'm not. It's now or never, Angie. 
Never? Well, you know how it is with us cops. I might be dead by Friday. Dan, I don't like that kind of talk. <laughs> okay, Angie. I'll see you. Don't work too hard. I'm sure he would like to meet your family. Oh, I'm sure he would, Dad. It, it's just he has a very full social calendar. Such as? With ballet. Oh? Oh, yeah, he's crazy about the ballet. nice little place out in Queens. Well, I think that's rather sweet. Well, she's very old, and he's devoted to her, and he spends a great deal of his time with her. Well, I have a lot of respect for a man who does that. Mm. There's a lot of men in his position who just put her in a home. If you do meet him, uh, don't mention this. Uh, he's very sensitive. Oh, of course. That's the reason he doesn't get out much. Health. 
Busted light, same ammo every time. There's no description. It's dark when the lights are out, Norman. Maybe mug shots? I was just about to show us something. A little trouble, huh? Yes, sir. Can you pick out the man from these? Oh, it could have been this one. Or maybe this one. You see, he wasn't as dark as you are, and he wasn't as light as you are. Mm -hmm. Well, was he black or white? <sighs> well, sort of in between, I'd say. How about him? Oh, could be. Could be. Would you be willing to swear it was? Well, I'd be willing to swear it could be. Mm -hmm. Then again, it could have been him. How about him? Oh, it certainly could have been him. Well, which one looks most like him at all these? Oh, dear. They all look so dangerous. Yes, ma'am, they are. You could slip a picture of her husband in there. She wouldn't spot it. The Lackas aren't the only muggers. Well, they mugged her. We can't arrest them on M.O. evidence. That's the kind of thing adds to the overload in the courts. They beat the rap easy. Yeah, I guess you're right. I can't bust them for this. But you're gonna bust them for something, aren't you? Norman, it's been a long day. You got a girl? Sort of one. Have her make you some fudge. Under arrest, Joe. For what? Gambling. Spread. You gotta be Come kidding. On, spread. You take him, you gotta take me. There ain't no you without Joe. Look, you're all witnesses. Now listen. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. You have the right to have the attorney present during all questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge. Do you understand your rights as I've read them to you? Do you wish to give up your rights? What do you think? If you've not understood or there's any part you've not understood, I will go back and explain it to you. Yeah, let me hear it all again. Yeah, sure, I'll read you to sleep in your cell tonight. Come on. You're all witnesses. Look, you're all witnesses to this. You're all witnesses. This guy's promised to me he's done nothing. Madigan? Yeah. My card. Oh, Mr. Fields. I'm Norman's father. How are you? I hate to bother such a busy man. Oh, that's okay. Want to walk the subway with me? Fine. I, uh, I don't know how much Norman has told you about us, but we're not at all happy about his going into police work. Uh-huh. Well, you can understand how parents can feel, especially with an only child. Well, Norman's not a child, Mr. Fields. No, of course not, but we worry, and police work is dangerous. Yeah, it can be. Well, I see what you mean, depending on who's doing it. Well, in your case, you know how to handle yourself. Well, he's done all right so far. Yes, but is, has he been tested? That's what we're worried about. Well, for example, his feeling about guns, I mean. He carries one, but he says he'll never use it. That's possible. Is it? Well, what do you want me to do, Mr. Fields? I, uh, I don't know how to say it. Go ahead. Well, look, Sergeant, Norman's told us a little about you. How what a sensitive man you are. Norman said I was sensitive? Yeah, not just about your fondness for ballet and the finer things of life, but also about your devotion to your mother. The ballet and mother, uh-huh. 
He'd be very upset if he, he knew that I let Andy. Oh, I won't tell him. Well, what I was trying to say, not too well, I guess, is that I feel that I can ask a man like you to look out for Norman, at least as much as you can. I always look after my partners, Mr. Fields, and I expect them to look after me. Of course, thank you. And I know you'd understand that I'd rather that Norman didn't know Oh, that... don't worry. I'll tell him I'd like to meet you sometime. So long. You know Joe's already out. Any elevator muggings last night? Are we now working in the area of preventive detention? The charge was legit. But what'll the next one be? Why not? The books are full of misdemeanors. Each one good for a night in the slammer. I can't operate that way. I know you can't. I'll handle it. How was the fudge? Look, Sergeant, I'd like to back you up. You will, Norman, when I need you. Remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against your court of law. You have the right to an attorney. You have the right to have the attorney present. Oh, the hell with it. Get in. What happened? He was faster than I was. You had a gun. I didn't draw. Well, what are you going to say in your report? The truth. You still want to be a cop? Yes. Then I'll write the report. Let's go. that your husband was swearing at you in the bedroom. Uh-huh. Well, then the neighbors would have to file a complaint. Madam. Madam, the best I can suggest is to either close your windows or get a divorce. Not heads. Thanks. What for? That report. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Like my not shooting to save innocent bystanders. Sure, you're probably a lousy shot. It was your chance to get rid of me, and I'm grateful. That's all right, Norman. If all my partners reported the truth, I'd be a meter maid in Flushing. <laughs> Want a sandwich? Sure. It's terrific. It's the egg salad today. 
Well, good. Going back to prison. Oh, who said we're going back? I saw Mr. Zelmani in the hospital. What did you do that for? I took him some flowers. Maybe that's why he hadn't filed a complaint against you. That ain't why. Why? Because he'll know what he'll get if he does. Oh, big deal. You found your mother again? I'm gonna watch you. Oh, you're gonna play copper. You know that partner, Madigan? He said you talked to him. What about it? We don't want nobody around here talking to pigs. Don't be a fool on your sister. Joey, come on! Jenny wouldn't squeal to nobody. About what, Tommy? What'd you do? Shut up. We didn't do nothing. You don't have to do nothing to get busted by Madigan. I heard about the gambling. It was a bum rap. Yeah. Thanks for your sympathy. Oh, look, Joe, can't we set up some kind of home together again, huh? Yeah, Joe, here, come on, what do you say? Come on. I don't give a damn one way or the other. Hey! Thanks. Joe. Why did Madigan roust you? What do you think? Because he hates my guts and I hate his. One day there's going to be a showdown. Joe, I said I didn't want to see you go back to prison, but more than that, I don't want to see you dead. What about Dan Madigan? Now resisting arrest. Get lost. Hey! Let's go my arm! Hey! Hey! This guy's lost on me! And I ain't done nothing! I'm out of here! I'm going to get out of here! Hey! Let's go my arm! Joey! Joey, cool it! Yeah, yeah, I'll get the lawyer. I know how to get the bail. Joey, I promise you, I'll get you out of there. Yeah. That Madigan's asking for it. 
I tell you, he's asking for it. What's the matter with you? Nothing. Nothing. Different, uh, not like a... Madigan? No, not like a cop. You know, he arrested Joe again last night. I know. Why'd he do it? There was an elevator mugging earlier. Did Joe do it? I don't know. Does Madigan? He believes Joe did. He's rousted Joe, and you know it. Can't you stop him? I'll try. Well, you've got to, or... Well, there's gonna be a killing. Why do you say that? I know my brother. You'd be wise to tell me everything you know. I know my brother. That's enough. You can be a sister to them, Janet, but not a mother. I can try. My mother's dead, too. So what? She's worried about murder, Sergeant. Well, she's probably right. You don't give a damn about people getting killed, do you? Oh, yes, I do. And I'm especially fussy about who gets killed. Well, you want this, don't you? You want to keep the pressure on until he cracks. You want a showdown. Come on, I'll buy you a hot dog. No. Terrific. I had a tough night, Tommy. Yeah, you had a tough night. You had a tough night. Got a minute, Tommy? Where's your piece? Came in to talk, not shoot. Joe, don't you? I'm listening. You're gonna lose him. Yeah? How? Madigan's gonna kill him. Maybe it'll go the other way around. Either way, you lose Joe. He can mug and get away with it for a while, but you can't kill a cop and get away with it for a minute. Who said anything about killing him? You did. Just a minute ago. What do you want? I told you. I want to talk. Have you ever heard of an encounter group? No. They had one at the school I went to. Cops and ex-cons like you. You say anything you want. No holes barred. You want Joe, we should talk to the cops. I want you to. Then we'll see about Joe. No, I, I ain't interested. We meet once a week, 8 to 10. Sunday nights. Think it over. There ain't nothing to think about. Yes, there is, Tommy. See ya. Guts, I'll give you that. I guess that was against regulations, huh? Yep. 
I've got a crazy idea I can get through to Tom. <laughs> it's crazy, all right. Besides which, he's only the junior partner. How about laying off him for a while? Nope. Just give me a couple of days. No deal. Any objection to my asking Captain Kane to let me work alone? That's your privilege. Nothing personal. You know that. Sure. Best of luck, Norman. Same to you, Sarge. Can I drop you to headquarters, Sarge? No, thanks. I'm taking my sweet little old mother to the ballet tonight. Understood, sir. I think Sergeant Madigan's a fine police officer. But? No buts, sir. It's, it's just that I feel I'm cramping his style. You don't like him? Oh, no, no, no. I like him, sir. It's this case we're on. I've got a new approach that I'd like to try alone. And I don't think it's fair to impose my point of view on Madigan. <laughs> well, that is a coincidence. What is, sir? Well, Madigan was on the phone with me when you walked in. You know what he said? No, sir. He said he thought you were a fine police officer, that he feels he's cramping your style, that he likes you, but that he feels it's unfair of him to impose his point of view on you. He said he felt that you should have a chance to work alone. I agree. Thank you, sir. No fields. If the sociological and psychological communication should break down, and we got right down to the nitty gritty, I'll you call Maddox good. good. Hey, hey, hey! You got out real quick. I'm glad. But you do not fall! I'm talking to a pig! I didn't do no talking! He did all the talking! First Jenny and now you! He come in a pool hall! It wasn't a rouse! Nothing like yeah, that! Yeah, I heard all about it. Came in without his gun, so you and him got real palsy wowsy at the bar. Some college punk talks pretty and you get all shook up. I ain't all shook up. What was I supposed to do? Now you're all a bunch of jerks. If that pig left his gun in his car, Pete and Freddy could have ripped it off. Oh, we didn't think of that. I just need one tonight. We're going through with it? Right. Why not? Nothing, nothing. Uh, we didn't know you'd be sprung. Well, you got it straight now? Yeah, yeah, I got it. I don't have to go over it again, do I? No, no, Joey, I got it, I got it. Ooh. Joe, where are you going? Mm. Tommy, uh, that, that cop you talked to feels? Yeah, what about him? You like him? Yeah, he's okay for a cop. You gonna talk to him again? No. No, Joey don't like it. But I do. I'd like you to talk to him tonight. What's a big rush? Tommy, why do you need a gun tonight? What are you talking about? I heard. Well, you heard wrong! I heard right. Joe's gonna kill Madigan, ain't he? Madigan ain't even gonna be there. Beware, Tommy. Come on, sis. Tommy! Come on.
see you right away. What happened? I'll be right there. Where's Matt? Said something about rousting Joel Lacker before he could do any more money. I'm sorry I got you down here. Where are your brothers? Uh, uh, I don't know. You said you followed Tommy. Please, I gotta go home now. You waited for me. Where's Tommy? Please, I, I can't. They're my brothers. Where is Tommy? They're in there. In the garage. Now look, you did the right thing. Just go on back home. What are you gonna do? Just gonna try and stop whatever it is they're gonna do. Isn't that what you want? Yeah. Just trust me, okay? Okay. the same question. I'm uh, driving this for a friend. Driving it where? <laughs> Didn't say where. You got a driver's license and a registration? What, are you going to rouse me like Madigan? If that's what it takes to keep you off the street tonight, that's what I'm going to do. Now let's see that driver's license. I ain't got one. All right, let's go. No, I'm not talking the pool room about wanting to be my friend, right? Let's go. Wanting to be my buddy, right? Let's go. What do we do with him? I don't know. Come on. We'll put him in the truck. Let's dump him in the river. Looks okay. What about the watchman? He's an old guy. He's probably asleep. What if he ain't? Then I'll put him asleep. All right, here we go. Maybe we ought to wait for the truck. We'll be here. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I'm okay. Now look, jerk. There's 10 grand worth of Jap transistors waiting for us on that dock. Now let's go get it.
go. shoot a man. Yeah, I know how you feel. Sometimes it happens. You're a cop. <laughs> no, you are. I'll never be. Scorcher. Yeah. Best place on the force for Norman. Yeah, I agree with you. I just didn't think he'd come back. Well, he wanted to quit, but I talked him into trying community relations. Yeah. He ought to like that. That's a good idea. He'll still have to pack a gun, but it'll be purely uh, decorative, unless the uh, Boy Scouts start shooting. You're under arrest. What'd he do? He put sugar on his hot dog. There's no law against that. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. You have the right to have the attorney present during all questioning. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge. 